Hey, whether you're trying to save money, declutter, develop better spending habits, or you just want to budget, a no buy can be very helpful in doing that. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs, and vlogs. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience with my no buy, the tips, the tricks, and just bits of advice to help you do it if that's something that you're interested in doing. In case you don't know what a no buy is, it's essentially cutting out spending for a predetermined amount of time. This will look different for different people depending on on why they're doing it and also depending on their needs. So one of the key things that I should highlight is that this isn't necessarily for everyone and this isn't me telling you that you need to do it. It's more so that if you were thinking about doing it and you wanted to know more, then this video will hopefully help you with that. But I never went into it feeling guilty about what I was spending or anything like that. It was it was more of like an introspective reflection that I was taking and that was about my spending, which I will talk about a little bit later on. But to get to the tips, the first two things that I found super helpful when it came to doing a no buy was setting a clear goal for myself and also setting clear rules for myself. Sometimes it can be helpful if the goal that you set yourself is also a financial one because it then ensures that you don't displace your spending habit from art supplies to something else. And it may look different for you, but one of the things that I knew I really wanted to focus on was cutting down on buying art supplies. I felt I was buying too many art supplies. I wanted to reset. I wanted to use the art supplies that I had. And I just felt like realistically, I couldn't afford, <laughs> I couldn't afford to continue spending the way that I was spending. And there are other reasons that I'll get into towards the end of the video. But essentially that was the main thing for me. I couldn't buy any art supplies. It had to be for one month. And also I told myself that I wasn't going to spend the money on something else. I wasn't allowed to start off a new hobby. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to start splurging. It just had to be a period of time where I was just conscious about my spending as a whole, but absolutely no art supplies to be bought. When it comes to the benefits associated with a no buy, I feel like there were several, but for me, the main ones that I wanted was I wanted to save money and develop a bit of a better relationship with money and with spending. I wanted to cut down on the amount of waste that I felt like I was creating by buying all these things that I wasn't getting around to actually using. I wanted to be more mindful when it came to my spending and I also wanted to focus on the art supplies that I had. To be able to do all this while also saving money sounded like an absolute bonus. Now that you have set your clear rules, you know that you're not going to buy X, Y, and Z, one clear thing, and I'm speaking to the past me as well as to potentially you, is to be careful of the pre-preparation stage. And what I mean by that is I knew that I was going to start my no buy. And part of me then kind of felt like, okay, well, what if I run out of white paint? What if I run out of blue paint? What if I run out of sketchbooks? Maybe I should pre-buy all these things so that in that time that I am not buying anything, I have everything. And for me personally, this completely defied the point. <laughs> This defied the point of me actually going on a no buy, essentially buying everything ahead of time so that I then don't need to buy anything or don't feel the urge to buy anything during that month. So I think be careful. You may need to do some preparation and chances are that you do have enough. And if you don't, then you may want to do something more like a low buy where you allow yourself the ability to replace something. And that kind of takes off some of the pressure or the feeling of needing to be prepped and ready for the snow buy. Focus on using what you already have. And for me, a really good way of doing that is through challenges. For example, you could go through your art supplies and decide to do like a no art box art box challenge. And I think Creating Cute Art mentioned this concept in the past. And it's essentially looking through the supplies that you have, gathering some of them as if it was an art box, and then doing a challenge with those art supplies. So keeping it nice and novel and fun. Or if you know that there is an art box that has similar supplies to the ones that you have, and you know the challenges that are in it, replicating that with the supplies that you already have. I always liked the idea of doing that because I thought it would be quite fun. The other thing that you can consider doing a use it up challenge and I feel like this is really good not just for a no buy but just in general because the aim of the challenge is basically to pick a supply or a set of supplies and the aim is to finish them and <laughs> Having tried this, it's really helpful because it almost like helps you combat this idea of, or my idea of, I'm going to run out of this supply and then I won't be able to buy it anymore, or I'm going to finish it and it's so precious and I'm going to use it all up and it's going to be gone. Because it turns out as much as I paint and as much as I create, I actually don't seem to paint enough to be able to use up like a pan of watercolors. Like I have tried, <laughs> I am nowhere near. So dedicating some time to kind of be like, 
okay, I'm going to use up this supply. And that is the aim. You can create guilt-free and let that be your focus and just focus on what you already have and having fun with that and learning that medium really well. And also seeing how many paintings it would take to use up that palette or how long it would take you to finish that up. I haven't finished at all. I came close with my gouache. Other challenges are like, I do like the idea of doing like Instagram challenges with other people because then there's like this feeling of camaraderie. We can encourage each other. We can look at each other's art. It's just a nice thing to do. And ultimately anything that you feel will allow you to experiment with your art supplies. I ended up doing some interesting experiments when it came to using my gouache. Some of the experiments worked, some of them didn't, but ultimately I stuck to my no buy. <laughs> Another thing that is a really great idea is to actually consider watching positive reviews of the art supplies that you already have. Not only is this really inspiring because you are watching someone be really excited about what you have, but it can also show you different ways to use the supplies that you have. You can see like the pros of your art supplies and you just get to look at your suppliers with fresh eyes without risk of seeing some art supplies that you don't already have that you may then perhaps want, which leads leads me nicely to the other thing that I would advise and that is to cut down on art halls and I love art halls I love creating art halls I love watching art halls I love them I really do but <laughs> as I've mentioned in previous videos I do feel like if you're trying to save money it just makes it a lot harder to not spend money if you're watching people buy things that you want so I think taking halls with a pinch of salt and instead replacing them with positive reviews or with people using your art supplies in a new and intriguing way is just so much better. You still get that feel good factor. You still get to see the art supplies when they're beautiful and new and being unboxed and all that excitement and all of that. But the supplies are things that you already have. So you're not tempting yourself to then go and break your no buy and buy something that you don't need. Another great benefit of the no buy is that can it can really give you the opportunity to just see what you actually enjoy, like what things are you being drawn to more. You can avoid being penny wise, pound foolish, which is what I was finding I was being sometimes. Another thing that I alluded to in my previous video, which I can link for you, where I essentially talk about the ways to save money when it comes to art supplies and when it comes to being an artist, is to essentially keep a wish list. During that no buy period, I knew and I told myself that I wasn't going to buy anything, but I also told myself that if there was something I did want, I could add it to a list. And at the end of the no buy, I could review this list and see if I still wanted those items, if I actually felt that I needed them and buy the things that I wanted. <laughs> My wish list was probably initially like 30 items. By the end of the no buy, it was four and I didn't feel pressed to buy them. So I, I feel like not only having a wish list, but just the mentality of I can buy things later, sales will come and go and then come again. <laughs> so it's okay. I can buy things later. It was just very, very helpful. It came in very handy, especially like, for example, when I went to um, Choosing Keeping, and I'll link that video for you somewhere up here. That was one of the things that people commented on because they were like, oh, wow, we can't believe you went to such a beautiful store and didn't buy anything. And it was very, very hard not to at the time. But I knew I was on a no buy. I knew that um, it's not a cheap store. I knew that any purchase that I would want to make from there would be quite a substantial one us would cost quite a bit which I wasn't ready to spend on and I knew I could come back later at a future date and the idea of being able to come back later the idea of being able to buy something whether it be six months or a year later was just really 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 nice I think that choosing keeping was probably the perfect store for me to have gone in to do that because they seem to promote a lot of um, sustainable purchases like choosing something and keeping it and then I added the using it <laughs> choosing keeping using see what I did so just like that idea and the ideology of like actually being intentional with your purchases and then actually keeping them and then actually using them just made the trip very nice, even though I didn't end up buying any of the beautiful art supplies. So I think it's just important to be mindful of what you consume when it comes to art holds, when it comes to social media, when it comes to the whole thing. And I am so guilty of, no, <laughs> I am so guilty of this, especially when it comes to seeing an art supply being used by someone that I really admire and then wanting that same art supply. 
Now, you can also use this as an opportunity to get a little bit deeper. For me, I started making observations about my spending habits when it came to the no buy. And what I mean by that is that I had told myself that I couldn't then um, start buying other things to replace or to fill that void. I was able to take a back seat to see why was I buying. And it was like a multifaceted answer. It's not just one thing. What I found was that quite a lot of the time, if I was having a hard day at work, if I was sad or if I was stressed, or if something was upsetting me, what I would then want to do is I would turn to buying art supplies. So you can imagine now that I'm having one month where I am not, <laughs> where I'm not distracting myself with buying art supplies. I had to find a more positive outlet. But I wasn't fully in tune to the fact that I was doing that until I couldn't buy art supplies anymore. And I was really struggling with not being able to buy art supplies and I didn't know why. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, huh, I had a hard day at work today. I wanted to treat myself and I can't. So how am I going to treat myself in other ways? And also reflecting on my spending habits and why I was buying so much and just trying to find more positive outlets allowed me to create more art. It allowed me to focus more on my Kofi, my equivalent of Patreon, and I'll link that down below for you, as well as allow me to focus on YouTube. So I created more videos. I felt more inspired. I was more curious. I was trying out things a bit more and it really did pay off. And that is something that I implore you to investigate as well. Why are you buying so much? And if it's for a good reason and you can afford it and you're happy then fine no problem but if there is something a little bit deeper that you want to address then perhaps this would be a good time to do so so for me I think they call it emotional spending or whatever something I hadn't done before and it was a bad habit that I started falling into oddly enough when I started addressing that it then made it a lot easier for me to continue with my no buy and though initially I wanted to do it for one month in the end I continued it for four months of not buying anything at all and and then in the months following that, I only bought like one or two items here or there that were replacing other items. So my spending as a whole had significantly improved. That being said, will I still buy art supplies? Yes. Will there still be hauls on here? Almost certainly. <laughs> but it taught me the importance of balance. Making sure that the art supplies that you already have are in clear view <laughs> so that you know what you have and tying nicely. One of my favorite things was also to have an inventory where I could basically see all the supplies that I had and almost like shop from them it, whether it be like a written list or whether you do a swatch book is entirely up to you but if you want to know how I did it then you can definitely check out this video where I go through all my watercolor palettes if you need help or encouragement sticking with the no buy then join me on Kofi and I am more than happy to encourage you to either buy or not buy depending on what season of life you're in if you are still watching then you are most definitely a real MVP and I really appreciate you let let me know that you're still watching by telling me whether you have done a no buy if you're thinking about it or whether it's just something that's not for you no hard feelings I'm just really curious to know I really think that there are some great benefits to doing a no buy for me one of them was addressing my spending habits but also the benefit of saving money and if you want to know more ways that you can do that when it comes to art supplies then check out my last video which I'll link down below for you thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week bye